Hello everyone, Daria here, and welcome to lesson number three of my Russian language course. Today we're going to talk about pronunciation again, and we're going to add some vocabulary. Here we go. So we're going to start with hardness and softness of Russian consonants. Hardness and softness. And we're going to answer three questions. The first one is what, the second one is where, and the third one is how. And before we even get here, I want to say something really, really important. Uh, during today's lesson, I'm going to say a lot of things that might, you know, scare you a little bit. That you might start feeling nervous and doubtful, kind of, maybe it's not for me, maybe it's too difficult. But right here in this corner, I'm going to put this exclamation point, okay? This sign here, exclamation. Every time you have this betraying thought that oh, I'm not sure I'm capable of doing that, look here, okay? Look here and remember that everything I'm going to talk about today, those are just details. This is just mastery of the Russian pronunciation and none of these will affect understanding. So even if you not even bother trying to remember anything of what I'm going to tell about, it will still be okay to communicate with Russians and everyone will still understand you. Okay? Now let's begin. So we start with the first question. What is hardness and softness? And hardness is usually obvious. It's just those normal uh, sounds that you are used to in English. Softness is just a little difference in pronunciation. And it's always much better to explain with examples instead of just, you know, speaking about theory. So let's get to English. And I got this example in Penguin Self-Study Guide, and I like it. Booty, yeah. And beautiful, beautiful. So, booty and beautiful. Here, pay attention to the sound B. Here, it's hard. Try to say it a little bit slower than you normally do. B, B, B. Try it. My pronunciation in English is far from being perfect, but still, I'll try. Booty, B, B, booty, okay? Almost like a song. B, 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 booty. And beautiful, B, beautiful, B, B, B. Beautiful booty, right? So here, uh, hard and soft. Same with, uh, let's think, I don't know, uh, poor, poor and pure. Again, pay attention to the first letter and the sound. P poor, p pure. You can feel that difference, right? So that's what it is. Poor, pure. Maybe he's so poor, but his soul is so pure. Booty, beauty. That's just the difference. So same is in Russian. We have hard consonants. Where is my, where is my eraser? So we have hard consonants. For example, let's take ba. And it can be soft. Ba. Ba. B, b, b. Repeat after me, of course. Ba. Ba. You hear the difference? Ba. 
b a Same with any consonants. Ma, mia, m, m, or maybe do, do, do. Soft. D, d, d. But we'll get back to it a little bit later in question number number two. Almost. Almost immediately, we're getting there. I just want you to know that in Russian, in the Russian language, this is pretty important because we have several words and actually a lot of words that depend on how you pronounce them. For example, uh, the word mother, mat, and uh, uh, the word uh, I don't know. A uh, mat, mat to crumble, mat. I think it's a bad idea to write in this part because I remember in the previous video there was that window here, so probably you can see it. So mother with this hard m here is mother mat, and we have the verb mat to crumble, mat. Ma, mia. So if you pronounce this one as hard m and say mat, of course people will understand from the context that you are speaking about your mother, not about crumpling something. But still, if you want to sound like a really, I don't know, almost like a native speaker, you should pay attention to those minor details. If it seems impossible. Remember where to look and just don't bother at all. So I hope you understood that there can be two ways of pronouncing the same sound: soft and hard. Remember that beautiful booty. Now we're getting to the question: where? Where are those soft consonants? How to understand when it's hard, when it's soft? So. First, here comes our very own soft sign. Soft sign. Now you understand why it's why it's called soft softness because it makes consonants soft. It can be in the end of the word, like uh, the one we already mentioned, mat, mat. For example, mat with heart. Heart, heart is this one with hard, hard t in the end.、Uh, this means actually very bad language, swearing, mat, and、uh, mat t t means mother. So different. That's why it's important to remember this pronunciation. So in the end, you can add、uh, the soft sign, and also in the middle of the word. For example, pismo, letter p, p, s, mo. So here you see the soft sign. It means that this letter s becomes soft. Try to hear the difference. If I say it without the soft sign, pismo, pismo, and with the soft sign, pismo, pismo. Right? You hear that? So sometimes you will meet the soft sign here and in the middle of the word. And let's just finish with hard and again hard. What's with my heart today? Hard. And soft signs. So the hard sign. Why is it called hard? Because it adds, actually not adds, it saves hardness. Okay. And now you will see in which situations it happens. So I hope you wrote it down because now I'm going to get rid of this. If not, pause the video and write down. The first situation where the consonants become soft is when 
the soft sign follows it. Okay? S, T, and all the others. So the second situation is when ya, ye, yo, you, or e. Oh, why is my e always so terrible? So if one of these letters follow your consonants, it becomes soft. For example, me, mu, me. All those words you always when you see. Uh, I don't know. Always when you see. Oh, jeez. For example, here the. Oh, I just can't speak today as usual. So when you see one of these letters, you understand that this consonant is soft. For example, the word din. Actually, we see both situations here. Din, it's not din. D, d, d. It's din. Din. So the first consonants, consonant becomes soft because of this, and n becomes soft because of the soft sign. Soft sign. Din. Same with the word laziness. Lin. Again, the first l is l. Lin. Din. And about the hard sign, when you want to save the hardness, when you want to get rid of the softness that these letters add to that, you put the hard sign after the consonant. So it kind of divides the word and saves this hardness. That is why uh, this is called hard sign. Okay, for example, the word Подъезд. По D. Here comes the hard sign. And remember the difference is with the, this little fellow. This little ending there. Подъезд. Okay. Подъезд. If there was no the hard sign, it would sound like подъезд. Подъезд. D would turn to a soft sound, but because we have this wonderful hard sign here, it sounds like подъезд, подъезд. So it's kind of divides this word, подъезд, right? I hope you understand the difference between the soft sign, which makes the consonants soft, and the hard sign, which stops and prevents them of becoming soft. It keeps their hardness. Hard sign, soft sign. And now we're getting to the question how. How to pronounce them, how to understand the articulation. And here we need to remember our creepy oyster from lesson number two. I even have a red red color today. So these are your lips. Well, I hope your lips don't look like these, but let's imagine uh, imagine that these are your lips. And front teeth and uh, uh, zombie, <laughs> zombie kind of teeth. So now I want you to pay attention to your tongue. When you try to pronounce E. Okay, I guess most people are pretty capable of pronouncing it. E. And I'm just reminding you that it's like double E in English. So try it first. E. E. Now try it with more thought. Try to understand where your tongue is. If you need, maybe even put your finger there and try to feel what's going on with your tongue. E. Okay, that's important. But let me just explain you what's going on if you can't feel it yourself. 
uh, normally your tongue is like that when you put it out it's like that but when you pronounce e the back of the tongue goes kind of upper so it turns out to look like this terrible creepy i don't know who what is a weirdo weirdo the clam let's call this character so here is your tongue it was like that when you pronounce e it goes like that e and here is the position for pronouncing russian soft consonants okay now i'm gonna explain this for example b b repeat after me b b and now try to put your tongue in the e position but pronouncing b b b b if you can't do it immediately start with e it's just super useful exercise let's uh add more cons consonants g b v g d and i don't know n let's use n m so all the consonants just open the open the alphabet and try. So the exercise is this: you start uh, pr start pronouncing long e, and doing that you add those consonants. Listen to me: e b v g d. Okay. So here is the soft sound. If you practice a little bit more, you'll be able to differ differentiate to divide to separate uh, e from the sound we need and you'll be able to replace it with other vowels so e remember your tongue e b v g d m n so on use all the consonants but remember remember that to pronounce these soft consonants you just pronounce the hard ones but you put the back of your tongue upper like in e pronunciation that's how you get soft consonants and of course there are some exceptions none of the language can live without exceptions so z s and sh are always hard and it's easy to remember because they were the hardest from the very beginning because they don't exist in english z s sh remember those z sh they are difficult they are hard so and they are always hard in pronunciation so i guess it won't be a problem for you to remember that these dudes are always hard for example жить to live жить even if we see this e here ж won't budge ж is always hard жить жить t is not that cool so because we have this soft sign it becomes soft t жить жить uh, it's to live and i encourage you to start writing things down and trying to build your vocabulary on the way so next time when we uh, start with verbs you'll be already wow i already know this verb it's always a good feeling and also some word цирк i don't know circus who likes circus i do and i even uh, don't have anything against clowns i like clowns цирк цирк again we see this poor little e trying to make it soft but no it's still hard цирк цирк because i guess it's just impossible physically to make these sounds soft they are always hard but of course 
we uh i hope you wrote it down pause the video and do it if you need and uh, boom, 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 boom. we also have uh, guys who are always soft for example ch and sh of course ch sh always soft even if you i don't know what what example oh, let me just chubaka chubaka so this uh, ch is still soft because again it's just about your pronunciation ch ch chewy chubaka ah <laughs> han solo would be so angry at me so ch is soft and sh is always soft even if it's followed by shu or sho all those hard vowels these two are always soft just remember it okay now we're done with hardness and softness i hope you understood everything and again if you are starting to feel that anxiety kind of frustration that it's too difficult this exercise with e doesn't work look here and remember these are details even if you ignore them completely it doesn't affect the understanding russian people will understand you no matter how properly you use the rules of our pronunciation so again if you need stare at this sign right now and we are moving on to the thing that thing i'm having troubles with pronunciation today to the thing that is even scarier which is vowel reduction 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 Ugh. so many mistakes today i make so vowel reduction you probably already had this question in your mind when i used some words like i don't know i don't think i used this word last time uh i certainly used the word moskva for example moskva my lovely city moskva and you probably noticed that what's going on why doesn't she say moskva moskva or why doesn't she say lon don lon don moskva london i don't say it like that because here comes the first rule of the vowel reduction in russian and the first rule is that o russian o when it is unstressed where there is no stress and no accent going on it it turns to the sound e eh. oh e eh. what's wrong with me today K ah i can't even pronounce it it's not clear ah it's not clear o it's something in between ah 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 oh 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 moskva stressing comes here so it turns to moskva 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 it's not moskva it's moskva okay same with london london dun uh uh you hear it's not o and it's not a ah. london don't do that it's this sound a uh. Ah, try it with me. Ah, uh, 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 something between those two. London, London, Moskva, Moskva. Okay. 
And it happens all the time when or is unstressed, when it's not stressed. For example, my favorite word, milk. So now I want you to try uh, yourself. Try to pronounce it yourself. Pay attention that only the last O is stressed. And remember this sound. Malako. Malako. And it's milk. Malako. Malako. Okay. Malako. Actually, some people say that um, before this stressed uh, vowel, it's a clear ah. Malako. But I don't know. Phonetics is such a difficult thing. And when it comes to speaking, what's even the difference between this super clear ah and this uh? when you speak fast and you just nobody even hears that difference so just don't waste your time to remember uh if it's before or if it's after the stress it's just who needs that who cares about that just remember that o is o when it's stressed the rest is this little fellow a malako moskva London, London. What else? I guess that's it for O. So let's get to the second rule. Write down that O turns to A. The second rule comes with the letter Ye. Ye. Ye, again, when the stressing, the accent comes to some different vowel, turns to E. E. Kind of e, something like that. Again, I'll just show you with examples. We already had the word sister, sistra. So here, a ah is stressed, sistra. Let me. In case you don't remember, sister. So we see that ye is not stressed. So listen to my pronunciation. Sistra, sistra, sistra. So it's almost turns to e. Sistra, sistra. Or another nice word, michta. It's a dream. Not a dream that you're sleeping and having some dream. But a dream that you're dreaming about something. I'm dreaming to become fluent in Russian. That's your dream. Michta. Again, A is stressed here. And pay attention that I'm not saying Michta. Michta. No, it's Michta. 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 So again, it's almost like e michta and uh, again actually in general all those rules mean that you make uh, the not stressed vowels a little bit not that clear so it's a little bit i don't know kind of on the background of the stressed vowel so it's not so clear. It's not o, it's a, it's not ye, it's e. So here as if as if there's some somehow trying to distance a little bit from this super cool vowel that is stressed. So it's rule number two. The first one was o. Oh, so ugly. And the second one is yeah, write it down. And number three comes with the letter ya. Ya. Ya again, in case you forgot. Ya. Ya. And when it is not stressed, 
it turns to the same thing as je. Ja, for example, the word egg. Ja, je. Yitzo, egg. Egg. It's not pronounced as yaitso. Yaitso. Here is the stressed vowel. It's yitso. Yitso. Kind of like e again. Yitso. Yitso. And another word, zayats. Zayats. This one means uh, oh, perfect combination, a bunny and an egg. Actually, zayats is a hare. It's not a rabbit. Zayats. You don't say it as zayats. Zayats. No, it's not stressed, so you pronounce it as. Zaitz, 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 Zaitz. Try it. Zaitz. The more you say it, the more, I don't know, the more weird it sounds. Zaitz, Zaitz, Zaitz. I even have doubts that it's the proper word. Zaitz. Oh, okay. What else? Maybe Yamaika. Let's write it down somewhere here. Yamaika. Remember Robertino Loretti. Jamaica. I love this song. So here the stressing goes here. Yamaika. Yeah. Yamaika. I'm not I'm not sure again. Is this correct? I think it is. So again, it's not like Yamaika. It's Yamaika. Yamaika. It's just not that clear. It's not a clear ya. Just again, if you are not stressed, go somewhere behind and be quiet. Yamaika. Yamaika. Not clear. Yamaika. Yamaika. Again, might seem super confusing to you. But again, nothing will happen if you say Yamaika. Nothing will happen if you say Zayats. And of course, nothing will happen if you say Yaitso. Everything will be just fine. So, if it seems too difficult, don't worry. Just put it away for some time and come back to it later when you become more comfortable with Russian. For now, if it's too difficult, don't worry at all. Don't bother trying to remember it. Put it away. You'll come back later. Now, remember, it's not that important. So, if you're still with me, guys, congratulations. You're kind of tough people. Difficult to scare. But I'll try my best to scare you off. Because Russian is not for everyone. Only for super cool and tough people. Voiced and unvoiced consonants. So, there are... As you can understand, voiced and unvoiced consonants. Let's write them down. B, V, G, D, B, V, G, D, Z, Z, Z. My Z is so creepy looking. That is Z. B, V, G, D, Z. Z. I hope you are familiar with them already because it's lesson number three. So, what's the difference? These are voiced consonants. You're just using your vocal cords. You're using your voice, actually, because it's not quiet. You're using it loudly. B, V, G, D, Z, Z. And they have their pairs unvoiced consonants. It means that your tongue and all the articulation is uh, the same, 
and uh, you just don't use your voice. So b turns to p, 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 b with voice, p without voice. So try the same with English, b, p, b, p, almost the same. So v has a pair, f, f. Let me just save the English version. V, f, g, without voice, turns to k, k. D, without voice, turns to t, d, turns to t. Z, that will be <laughs> difficult to write in English. Z, without voice, turns to sh. So this turns to this, and z turns to s. Z turns to s. So again, voiced and unvoiced, quiet. B, p, v, f, g, k, d, t, z, sh, z, s. Now pause the video and try to practice yourself. Try to read them all there and back, there and back again. I hope you did that. Uh, now let's actually again, I have this bad, bad area with lots of lights. I hope you wrote it down. I'm going to get rid of English version because it's a Russian class. So what is the rule? The rule is terrible. Sometimes in some words, voiced consonants can turn to unvoiced consonants. And that's why I've put those pairs here. It can happen in the ending. So in the end of the word, let's take the word Peterburg. Peterburg, wonderful, wonderful city, so incredibly beautiful. So, stress, first, let's put stress here, Peterburg, again, let's remember the previous rules, Peterburg, you don't say Peterburg, these are not stressed, so they turn a little bit quiet, quieter, they turn to E. E. Peterburg. No surprise that shortly it's called Peter. Peter. Peterburg. So they are not clear yet. But here I wanted to tell you about this rule. Here is the ending. The ending. And we have this fellow here. G. But pay attention how I'm pronouncing this word. Peterburg. Peterburg. K -k. You hear? It's not Peterburg. Peterburg. It's even physically difficult to pronounce. Peterburg. Takes too much effort from your throat. Peterburg. No. That's why the voiced consonants in the end of the word turns to the unvoiced consonants. So, g, when you say it, becomes k. Peterburg. Let's practice with another wonderful city. Never been there, unfortunately. Yet, maybe one day. It's Gamburg. Hello, Germany, Gamburg. So again, you see, in the end, we have G, voiced consonant G. And again, it's difficult to say Gamburg, Gamburg. Nobody does that. You say Gamburg, K, K, Gamburg. So it's kind of is flowing out of your mouth. Gamburg. So this turns to the unvoiced pair. Mm -hmm. Gamburg. What else? Uh, 
some other example. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Actually, it took me too long to come up with an example, so I just had to cut this part of the video. But I remembered another example, and this is about Russian last names. For example, this dude, Garbachev. Remember the rule that yo is always stressed? I hope you remember. So here is the perfect example, Garbachev. So, again, let's practice what we already know. Yo is stressed, so this o turns to... You don't say Gorbachev, you say Garbachev. Gar, 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 Garbachev, Garbachev. And actually, this is the guy who has been hated today because he's kind of responsible uh, for the end of the... Un you, oh my god, I almost said United States. Uh, the Soviet Union, of course, the USSR. So, what, 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 what am I talking about? Actually, yes, I'm supposed to be speaking about this. Here we have V, v but try to say Gorbachev, Gorbachev, again, it's difficult. So, in the end, it turns to F, F, Gorbachev, Gorbachev, Gorbachev. Same with this guy who replaced Putin for a couple of years. Medvedev. Another, another Russian last name. Medvedev. F. So, it's not voiced in the end. It's unvoiced. Medvedev. Medvedev. And again, practice with this. Medvedev. It's not Medvedev. No. Medvedev. Because this one is stressed. F in the end. Gorbachev. Medvedev. Peterburg. Gamburg. So this was the ending. But also, it happens when... Uh, the, uh, in the middle of the word. For example, uh, well, let's take the word vodka. Of course, the biggest stereotype about Russians. What is it? Stolichnaya. Stolichnaya vodka. Uh, so, vodka. Now listen to me pronouncing this word. Vodka. 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 I'm not saying vodka. Vodka. Because it's difficult. Who needs that? Vodka. So, the rule is when the voiced consonant is followed by one of these fellows K, k, k. It becomes unvoiced as well, just because it's easier. Vodka. 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 Okay? Again, if you're starting to think, oh God, I'll never remember that, there is a red sign for you. Put those thoughts away and just enjoy looking at this wonderful vodka picture by me. Okay, the next word would be in the beginning. Vtornik. Vtornik. And actually, I was blamed for uh, my terrible writing. Oh, it hurts so much. I'm suffering of it myself, and you just made it worse. So, people blamed me that my n and my e look the same. They don't. N is like this and in the middle of the first line you put this one. E 
is when you put this line here and without stopping, you put it here. So, N, E. They are so different, so stop yelling at me, please. Okay, let's stop being goofy and become whole serious. So, вторник means Tuesday. 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 Is it correct? Tuesday. I hope so. So, вторник, you see the V consonant in the beginning, but it's followed by this dude, this little fellow T. Вторник. Again, it's just physically hard to say вторник. Вторник. So, it becomes unvoiced. Вторник. 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 So, this is a rule number two. If it's followed by an unvoiced, why would I put stress here? By the unvoiced consonant, it turns to an unvoiced consonant as well. Uh, just practice. Practice. Practice makes um, not perfect, it makes better, certainly will make you better. But again, if it's too overwhelming, if it's too difficult, remember that it doesn't cause any problems if you don't care about it. And the last boring thing for today is that Actually, this situation works both ways. So, unvoiced consonants can turn to voiced sometimes. Yes. So, this group can turn to this group. For example, again, if the voiced consonant follows it. Let's take the word vogzal. Oh, I'm too fast. I should have asked you how to read this properly. So, ah is stressed. So, how do you read this word, remembering the rule about the vowel reduction? Vagzal. 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 And it means uh, station. If we go all British English here, it would be the railway station, the railway station, that's how we learn it at school. In Russian, it's vokzal. Here, I want you to put attention to this letter. It's k, sound k. In this part, in this group, k. But it is followed by z, and z, as we know, is voiced. Z, it's loud. Z. So again, they can't go together because it's difficult. K -z, k -z. Difficult. Try to say it quickly. Vokzal. 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 Nobody does that because it's easier to make k voiced. Vokzal. 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 Vagzal. So, again, followed by voiced, turns to voiced. Voiced followed by, followed by unvoiced, turns to unvoiced. Again, too difficult for now, forget about it and come back to it when you are ready and comfortable and relaxed. Now remember that these are just details. Details and uh, yeah. And now finally, let's get to some vocabulary. Vocabulary. I know it's been boring. I know it's terrible, but please forgive me. I want to get rid of that pronunciation stuff myself. But if we just skip it, Unfortunately, you'll have that bad habit of bad pronunciation. So that's why I divide this topic in groups for several lessons. So slowly we are improving it. Slowly, but from the very beginning. So you don't get used to pronouncing things wrong. 
So, vocabulary. Remember in the first lesson I said that you didn't need the word здравствуйте. Здравствуйте, but not anymore. You are grown up. It's lesson number three. So, you can use this word already. Здрав... В, 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 с, т, в. Oh my goodness, it's so long. Y, t. So stressing goes here. Здравствуйте. Again, now let's immediately practice our pronunciation. Here, I don't know if you can see it. It's hello, but I guess you already know that. So here, the tricky thing is that you don't pronounce this letter. It's just silent letter. Not like in English. In English, it happens all the time. Boom, there is a letter, but for some reason you don't pronounce it. Why? Just remember it. So here I am to pay you back. Just remember that here you for some reason don't pronounce this V. Okay, so здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Remember that unstressed ye turns to e, e, e kind of stuff. Me turns to e like that. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте means hello, official word. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Отлично. Meaning great. Now, what, what, what else? Do I need to erase it? The next word you already know. It's привет. Привет means hi. And if you, I guess you already understood that we are writing down greetings. Okay. Здравствуйте. Привет. Привет. Don't forget to repeat after me. Okay. Привет means hi. Привет. In the morning, you say доброе утро. In English, it's good morning. And in Russian, we say kind morning. Доброе утро. So, let's write it down. До б р о е Утро. Утро. And it's so great that now you know the rules of vowel reduction. So, pay attention here. Доброе, рае, рае. Доброе утро. Утро. Ра, ра, ра. Доброе утро. Meaning, good morning. By the way, in Russia, morning is kind of a long event. Uh, even, I don't know, even if it's uh, midday, even if it's oh, afternoon, before this time, you still can say доброе утро. It's not like somewhere in Europe when uh, 9 a.m. is already good day or something like that. No, we like to sleep long. Доброе утро. 11 a.m. would be okay. So, good afternoon, good day would be добрый. Again, in Russian, it's kind day. Добрый. Добрый. You see how I'm sacrificing myself. Because of you, <clears throat> I've started to write E properly, not how I used to. That's my normal E. But for you, I say it, oh, whoa, 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 I write it properly, like in a textbook. I hope you appreciate it. So, добрый день. And we already had the word day today, because we speak Spoke, spoke about softness. День. Добрый день. Good afternoon or good day. Afternoon, let me not finish it. Добрый 
день. Now I don't want you to put attention to any grammar. Why is it добро? Добро е? Why is it и here? Just remember it, okay? Доброе утро, добрый день. It's just a greeting. Just a greeting. And evening is добрый. <coughs> I'm sorry about my voice. Добрый вечер. 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 Meaning good evening. Good evening. Вечер. Добрый вечер. Again, remember the rule. Вечер. Вечер. So, здравствуйте. Привет. Доброе утро. Добрый день. Добрый вечер. I receive a lot of questions about the word здравствуйте. And actually, people just can't pronounce it. People cannot. So here, uh, Russian teachers have this little trick. You can divide this word. It's getting so messy here. So let me just write it down again. So I hope you wrote it. Okay. Добрый день, добрый вечер. And I'll get rid of it. So here, the trick is that you uh, divide. Let's get rid of the title too. You divide the long word, any Russian word. I will use здравствуйте just as example. Any long word that you can't pronounce, you divide it in parts. Okay? You divide it in parts. For example, здравствуйте. Let's write it again. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. So, divide it in parts. Say те, те, те. Then a longer part. Вуйте, вуйте, вуйте. Maybe here. Раствуйте. Don't forget that we don't pronounce it. Раствуйте. And finally, здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. So again, те, вуйте, раствуйте, здравствуйте. If you do it with any long words, starting with small parts and then combining them together, it just helps you to... Master, master that word and remember it and pronouncing it correctly. So, after we greet people, usually we ask, how are you? In Russian, it's как. And I want you to read this word yourself. I'll just... Uh, it's a. Uh. Ah is stressed here. So how do you read it? I'm speaking about this. Дела. Как дела? Как дела? Means how are you? How are you? So it's a very common um, phrase just to say Привет, как дела? Hi, how are you? And what can you answer? You can answer good, хорошо. Again, let's practice. Too unstressed. О. Хорошо. Хорошо means good. Хорошо. Плохо means bad. Плохо. Again, not stressed. Плохо. Ха, ха. Плохо. Bad. 
bad and normalna. Okay, long word, but it's easy to remember. Normal. No. So many pronunciation rules to practice here. First, we see that A ah is stressed, so pay attention to these two. Normalna. No, no. Normalna. And the soft sign. L, l, l. Remember the, the oyster. L, l, l. Normalna means okay, not bad, but could be better. Normalna. <coughs> I'm sorry again about my voice. And uh, let's say uh, goodbye. Goodbye, of course. No long conversations with Russians. Hello, how are you? Goodbye. Drink some vodka on Tuesday. So, very long word, just as здравствуйте is do, sви, da, ni, ya. Here you read it as a one word because it's kind of goes one into another. До свидания. So the rule about reduction goes to this O as well. До свидания. До свидания. So it's not до свидания. До свидания. До свидания. And it means goodbye. Goodbye. And uh, the informal way to say goodbye is пока. Again, пока. Пока means bye. Bye-bye. Well, not bye-bye to you because you have homework to do. Пока. And I guess that's enough. That's enough for today because I don't want to overwhelm you with information. So here comes the homework. The homework. Homework. I want you to visit the, uh, my page on my website. I will include exercises for you so you can practice soft uh, and hard consonants. So you can practice the vowel reduction. Unfortunately, we are not in the real class, so I can't, I can't listen to you. I can't correct. I can't give you lots of exercises because it's been a long video already. Too long. So, there you'll find um, the practice sheets. Practice sheets, let's call them like that. It's real Russian club.com. And the full link will be below this video. So, go there, it's absolutely free, and just practice with the lesson. Real Russian club.com. And now, Last week we had a bunch of words there. Now I want you to go back to them and practice the proper pronunciation with those rules. So practice, practice, practice and practice. Nothing else will help you to learn the language. Only practice. Okay, I guess that's it for today and uh, thank you very much if you've been staying with me for an hour. You are a hero, a hero of our time. So, <clears throat> what else before I lose my voice completely? I guess that's it. Thank you again. If you have any questions, leave them below this video. If you have any more complaints about my inappropriate E or something like that, let me know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'll be happy to hear any critique from you. So, go to the comments, let me know what you think, what you need, what you're interested in, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye!